we have got a good one for you today. We are looking at the RBL, RB Leipzig, 4-2, four 4-2. Two, but under Marco Rosa, they've kind of moved into a little bit of a hybrid between the 4 2 and the 4 2 3 one It all depends on the personnel that they've got at the time. We're going to go through each tactic. got some interesting uh, statistics to show you as well. A couple of clips, loads of highlights, loads of goals. I'm really impressed with how this looks in the match engine. So much so that I'm going to use this RBL model in my new Twitch save, which is going to be starting in a couple of weeks' time, towards the end of the month of March. Make sure you go and drop a follow over on my Twitch. I haven't announced the save yet. However, I am going to use this model in the Twitch save. All the Patreons as well, you get the tactic download for free. Links down in the description to that. Go and click onto the Patreon download it, put it in your tactics folder. Everybody else, I'd appreciate if you go check out the Patreon so you get the tactic downloads that you can put straight into your game. Or, don't worry, I am going to go through both tactics, show you all the player instructions, team instructions, everything so you can copy it and put it into the game yourself. All right, let's go and have a look at the RB Leipzig 4 triple two. 4, 2, 3, 1. Okay, so I've been watching RB Leipzig over the last sort of like couple of weeks knowing that I was going to do this video and it's it's been a little bit of a hybrid. If you just go onto some websites, they'll say they played a 4, 2, 3, 1. They'll play a 4, triple two, but it all really depends on the personnel. Obviously, I think nkuku has been out injured for a while. Tino Werner gets, some, gets into some really interesting positions that we're going to show you. And I must admit, we started with the four triple two because that's essentially what everyone Im imagines from sort of like the classic Ranić and Ralph Hasenhutl days. And then from there, they kind of went a different route under Julian Nagelsmann. But they've kind of gone back to this. Not so much. It's not so much heavy pressing, rock and roll, whatever you want to call that, Jürgen style gig and pressing. Some of their stats are actually a little bit more towards the middle range of the Bundesliga. So there's not over-reliance on pressing and not an over-reliance on getting that ball forward as quickly as possible. They still want to progress the ball quickly, the use of the wing-backs. But Marco Rosa has brought more of this 4-2-3-1 that he had success with it. Um, Borussia Mönchengladbach, quick vertical passes, but at the same time, building out from the back, you've got players like Gavidal, obviously Willy Orban doesn't do as much, I'm going to break it all down, we've also got Ram as well as a very, very attacking left wing back, we're also going to hopefully get the best out of those attacking players, Werner, Silva, and Kuku, Olmo, Poulsen, and oh god, Schlovazai, we'll go with that one, never get that right. Bear with me. So this is the 4-2-3-1 version. Now, both team instructions are exactly the same for both. There is no differences between the two. The only tweak we've got is the central striker role, obviously moving right into the middle, and then obviously Werner coming out on this left-hand side. So starting off from the back, we have got the goalkeeper on a sweeper, keeper on support, no player instructions. The right-back role, which has been Heinrichs. If we kind of just look at the little... Uh, passing network from the 3-0 win over Munch and Gladbach at the weekend. You can see Benjamin Heinrichs on that right-hand side, David Ram just a little bit further forward. And obviously you've got then Gavidol and Willie Orban. Now, if you're using this, this is from Statsbomb, using this to show it has the passing networks and also shows obviously where they're receiving the ball and where they are on the pitch in terms of average positions. As you can see, Tino Werner kind of drifting out onto that left-hand side. So the passing network is linked, and the colours here are linked to this OBV. I will leave a link down in the description. That gives you a nice little article about, about what is OBV. Basically, it's on the ball value. So, darker the colour towards the red, the more dangerous tending than they are with their passes. So, receiving the ball, and then what they do with it after. So, players, in particular, the creative players, will get safer passes, passes with, passes with lower XG, and then will obviously create something with a more dangerous pass, might even be assist, <coughs> creating key chances, those sort of things. But as you can see from two centre-halves, one, Auburn is blue, which kind of means a lot of his passes are a little bit safer. Gavid on the other side, a little bit more dangerous. As you can see, he's in the more of an orange, or a little bit more of a creative force. So we need to do that. They've got two sitters with Lima and Hadara. Very much there protecting. RB Leipzig have got a really good shot. Shots against that. I think the best in the Bundesliga. I'll put a little uh, a graph up now to show you. So they've got a really good base with obviously Auburn, Gavidol, Lima, Hadara. Does allow, allow then the two wing backs to get up nice and high. They've obviously then got Schoblesai. Svorsberg is kind of playing as the second strikers. Andre Silva right in the middle. Werner obviously heading out onto that left hand side as much as he does. Remember his Leipzig days in the past before the move to Chelsea. Getting into that left half space. I think the problem with Chelsea was they did not use him. And because 
because maybe German football is a little bit more transitional, didn't often come up against maybe as low blocks as much as what he would do in the Premier League. That was maybe his downfall in the Premier League. A little bit of a mixture of the, the style of player of Chelsea, what the manager, he was never going to be a centre forward where he's standing in the middle and scoring 30 goals. That was never going to be him. He likes to face up player. He likes to run at defenders, cutting in on that left from that left-hand side. And then obviously there is Ram, wing-backs we've already spoke about. So how do we put that? into the game. So, what we're looking at, obviously, Klosterman, Heinrichs, doesn't get as high, so just a wing-back on support. Willie Orban, the captain, tremendous centre-half, no play instructions, I've just got him to be a central defender on defend. Gavidol, Gravidol has been out injured for the last game, unfortunately, but we'll put him in just so you can see it. He has got ball-playing defender on defend. I was going to do stopper, but I think the dribble more, and I've got a few little highlights to show you at the end, just to get that rule going really good, and we absolutely smashed Union Berlin. Obviously, they were playing a 3-5-2 with a low block. So having him being able to carry the ball out from the back has been incredibly useful. And then Ram, no play instructions, complete wing back on attack. We want him getting up here as much as we can. Obviously, Werner's going to start out and then obviously go inside, maybe to even make a second striker at time. So we want to create that. Now, this is the role that I have been using. Lima, if I just go back, these are the two that I've gone with the most. Um, I think the win over Mönchengladbach, it was Lima and Hadara. Often, where is he? Uh, Kevin Campbell will also go in there, but we're going to go with Lima. Not the br most brilliant in terms of deep, creative players. They're not deep-line playmakers. They're not registers. They're okay. There are a lot of, you know, they do the ball of box-to-box -box midfielder roles well in the game. They'll do the ball-winning midfielders in the game. But as you can see with Lima, I've got him as a half-back. Half-back instruction to stay wider. Now, with this, we're wanting to create a back three. Obviously, we're going to get Ram and Klosterman round on the on the sort of like the overlaps and get them nice and high. We want to build with a back three, and they often do it, especially if they're coming up against front two or if there's a higher press, and then they will often build up with a back three. Now, with Lima, I'm trying to get him to be a half-back. Obviously, the half-back gets you to naturally drop in. And when they do build up in a back three, it ends up looking a little bit like this, with Lima going into that sort of like right centre-half, right-back position. Very good at carrying. He'll give it, and then what he will do is he'll then progress in the midfield. He doesn't stay. He'll give it. He'll play it out, obviously, to the Heinrich, so the, or the wing-back, play it across. And he does then move into midfield. However... FM is not as fluent that way, and what gen and then what generally happens is that when we do build out for the back nine times out of ten, he does then become the middle centre half, which is not ideal, I must admit, but it's what we're trying to build. It does help as we build up play, it helps us get our two wing backs around, so it's fine. But ideally, I did want him coming into this right back channel. I've tried other things. Obviously, he's not a deep line playmaker. It's the closest we can get. Maybe a tweak football manager for FM24. A couple of little tweaks where we can build out from the back. You know, having my halfback drop in to be a right back. Things like, I don't know how they would implement it in that, that in the game. But having something where they drop into the right centre half role. A lot of players do it. Ericsson does it a little bit. Frankie de Jong's done it at times as well. Dropping into those sort of like wider centre back areas to get to progress the ball with a three at the back. There, so there's Heimer. Volante support. You know, we've got Schlag. Uh, Schlager, there's Lima that does it. They've also obviously got Hadara that did it at the weekend against Watch and Gladbach. So that's just a Volante on support. And then into Schlubbers, this is where it gets beautiful. They've got, I think the good thing, and what I've been reading about is obviously Eric Ten Hag as well, that you kind of keep your base shape, but then the substitutions and the changes that you make are not like for like. So if you think of obviously when Anthony plays on the right hand side for Manchester United, if Sancho goes out there, they're still going to be playing a 4-2-3-1. But the type of player that you play out there is completely different. You know, there's no like like, like for like players. It's literally they can do different areas. So Nkuku can probably do all four attacking areas. Paulson has often come out onto the left hand side. He lead the line differently to what Silver does. Silver's not great at sort of like build up play, link up play, a little bit scrappy. But then he works the channels maybe better than what a Paulson does. Obviously, Paulson uses his height and his advantage and his physical attributes maybe to hold the ball up better than what a Silver does. And that makes it a real interesting mix. And I think it does help you in terms of when you're wanting to change things yes you can go to the 422 and change it that way but just to change in personnel and then what you change you know putting a Paulson on being a target forward you could then move in Cuckoo out wide change that to maybe inverted winger you could bring in Cuckoo across this side to be a shorter striker so there's lots of different options within these four but this is the base that I've started with Schlobberzai advanced playmaker on support. I've just asked him to stay wider. Now, when we want that, see that 4-2-2, you do kind of obviously get Nkuku, the standing second striker going up there to link up with the other striker, Silver. But we just, we don't want him to be out here. 
We just want him to get in the little half spaces a little bit so he can whip crosses in. That then allows Klosterman to get round the outside still. And then with that, see if Slobber's like can kind of, I don't know, get into what we call maybe the, what, the half spaces, these areas here in between, maybe the, the centre back and the full back and in between maybe a DM. Sometimes some might sit with a single pivot. So you imagine a single pivot in there, he's just kind of dropping off his shoulder a little bit, trying to find a little bit more space. Might then suck in a central defender, might even suck in the left fullback. And Cuckoo, second striker, you know, Forsberg did this really well at the weekend. Often, as I said, looks like a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-4, but we've been going with Cuckoo while he's fit in the game. Out on the left, Timo Werner, stay wider, player instruction, and on the 4 triple two, exactly the same, but we've got the same instruction, we've got him... Um, Dribble more and stay wider. Okay, so that's the instruction for him. He looks absolutely fantastic in this role. And then up front, Silva. I said, you can change it, whoever you're playing. Obviously, you could do Nkuku, a little bit of a complete forward on support. He could be a false nine. He could be a Trequatista as well. He'd be very good as a Trequatista. I am enjoying seeing the Trequatista in as a number nine. So there's another way you can do. But with Andre Silva at the moment, he is a kind of a bit of a classic number nine. He does like to work the channels. He, he worked this little pocket. Remember, there's an over-reliance with... Uh, Leipzig at the moment to go to this left hand side where there's a Forsberg, where there's a Werner, where Ram is more attacking. Obviously, here with Schlobberslai, you've got more of a playmaker. Heinrichs, Klosterman don't create as much going forward as what the left side does. So there's a little bit of a a little bit of a need for Silva to drop into these sort of like right channels, which he will do as a pressing forward. And then obviously allows then the space for maybe Schlobberslai and Cuckoo Werner to come off and hit the penalty spot with those late runs. All right. That is the team. Moving into the team instructions, we've got a uh, positive mentality. Could change that onto attacking. I have enjoyed seeing attacking in FM since the update, but I've just gone for positive for now. Was wanting to make sure that we were defensively solid. Remember those shots conceded stats that we um, had at the start of the video. Positive mentality, shorter passing. They have got the second highest possession stats in the league. They've then got field, the second highest to buy and of course, in terms of field tilt in the league. Field tilt is... Possession in the final third against your opponents. Obviously, they're dominating the games. In that final third, they're kind of drifting away from that very aggressive 4 triple 2 that Ralph Ranić had in the early days. It's a little bit more possession-based, so we're dominating opponents. So that's why I've just got shorter passing on. Higher tempo, of course. It's RB Leipzig. We're still wanting to get that ball quickly. Get that ball into those attacking four players as, as quickly as possible without going long. Um, overlap, left. Want Ram to get round that left hand side. Work into the box. They aren't renowned for putting. They aren't renowned for putting crosses in. They do like to get into these wider areas first before a Ram and Heinrichs delivers. In transition, take short kicks from the goalkeeper. As you can see, this little statistic from this season. Um, team comparisons for goalkeeper pass length. As you can see, RB Leipzig have the lowest goalkeeper pass length in the division, even less than Bayern Munich. So obviously, there's a, a need there for the goalkeeper to play it out from the back. So we're asking to take short kicks, distribute to the centre half because generally we want Lima to drop in. The two fullbacks are going to get round higher anyway, so we'll just make sure that pass is nice and short. Counter press, yes, and counter. We are doing it now. They're not over reliant on that really aggressive counter pressing. You remember when um, Ralph Ranić came to Manchester United and there was that big buzz that Man United were going to be this absolute pressure machine, and it's not quite the case no more, and it's not quite the case with RB Leipzig. So as you can see with this one, pressure's in the posing half. Now there's a little bit of a, a thing that you've got to consider. Obviously Bayern Munich are lower than RB Leipzig, but you've got to think they have less pressures in the opposing half than some teams because they have more of the ball, they have more of the possession, so there'll be less pressures because they've got the ball, if that makes sense. But still, Eintracht Frankfurt are a team that are very, very much gegen pressing, as you can see. They've got high possession numbers, and so, so you can see there's a difference between Leipzig and Frankfurt. Leipzig are not going as heavy as what you might have considered a couple of seasons ago. But with that, I've still put counter press on, and then out of possession, I've gone high press and high line, obviously because they are going to be up there trying to win the ball back in that sort of like attacking third. But with the trigger press, I've just put it on more often rather than much more often. And I haven't done prevent shot distribution uh, from the goalkeeper. I don't want us really going pressing down the goalkeeper much. And then for the rest of it, I've just left it blank. You could do pressing trap inside if you wanted to. I haven't seen the need to do that just yet. But something that, especially in the old days, pressing trap, getting nice and narrow, getting uh, outside midfielders, 
fullback strikers to kind of force the play back inside where you had obviously that overload with that four triple two. Not so much now with obviously Werner going out onto that left hand side. So I've decided to leave that one blank. All right, guys, that is the team instructions, player instructions. As I said, patrons, you can now download it for free. Go check out the Patreon. Getting close to 50 patrons really supports the channel, the stats and stuff that I've used. And the videos, the, the video analysis that I've done over the last week or so has been using Y Scout. I've just paid for that for the year. It cost me 240 quid and Patreon donations has helped me pay for it. So I appreciate that very much. Thank you. It's the easiest way to use and watch games, build up players, everything. The goals and all the highlights you could ever, ever want. So I appreciate your support. If not, as I said, pause the video, copy the tactics for yourself. There is obviously the only change is that Werner Roll, all the player and team instructions are the same. Okay, guys, let's go and see. Now, we've started the season pretty well. Playing the playing the 4 triple two against Bayern, they had a man sent off. We were obviously a little bit, you know, this has kind of led to me believe that, well, I think when you're wanting to change the game, maybe go to the 4 triple two, but start with the 4 2 3 one. And then with that, I thought, right, we're playing a team that are obviously quite low down, one of the lower teams in the DFP Pokal first round. Let's play the 4 triple two. And we did all right. We dominated, like, we absolutely battered them. They had, like, one shot. But... I then decided for when the Bundesliga starts, let's go to the 4-2-3-1. And we've had some tremendous results to start the season. Four wins, really good, positive results. We've absolutely, there's been no luck involved. Even the Stuttgart game in 3-2, we absolutely deserved three points. Let's go and see some match highlights and see how it looks in the match engine. Right, here's the first one. We're obviously going to look at, this is actually in the defeat to uh, Bayern Munich in the, in the Super Cup. We're playing that 4 triple 2 We're just going to look at the role of Lima. So remember, we've got the player instruction, half-back player instruction, stay wider. We build up, as you can see, he drops in to make a little bit of a three then, but before the player moves on, he is there. He is busy because what he does do, he, he doesn't just stay in the three. Once that ball goes into the middle third, he then moves. He then goes into it and acts and makes sure he joins his other central midfielder to make the two. So we'll just keep our eye on him. He moves. We're into a back three there. We'll progress it. So we're kind of building up with the three. And I said, that does allow, you know, this would be him in sort of like, not really, well, yeah, in real life. But he does, because of how the halfback works in the game, it just splits the two centre halves. But it does give us the opportunity then to progress the ball. Into Nkuku gets up the, some really good positions with this offset shadow striker. Because a lot of teams play with that sort of like double pivot, with a narrow double pivot or a single pivot in the sort of like the DM, DM role. This, this role just allows him just to have a little bit more space and then with Werner, look at his run here. Advanced forward, so you'd maybe expect him a little bit narrow, but because we've got stay wider on, it just creates that little bit of space. The right back Cancelo gets sucked in. One, twos. Timo Werner's now got a clean effort on goal. And of course, as Timo Werner does, that's the thing that lets him down, of course. But all the movement, starting with that back three, half back, progressing it into midfield and Cuckoo dropping off. Werner exploiting that space left behind. It does work, as you can see, with the advanced forward. You can imagine as well the inside forward in the 4-2-3-1 doing the same. And then it's just a little quick one. The Dats have just gone down some 10 men. Cancelo gets sent off. And there's Werner. He's run. So at this point at the second half, we changed from the 4 triple 2 to the 4 2 3 one. So we started a little bit wider. And Cuckoo's dropped into that space again. Daily Blinders coming in as a centre half. Sucked out. Leaving a big space in behind. Kimmich has now gone to right back. Hasn't trapped the run immediately. Of Werner, we're in again. And he fires over the bar. We had chances to win the game. A little bit of quality. Um, an informed Marcus Rashford played off that left hand side. We could have been 2 0 up against Bayern Munich. And of course, in Bayern Munich fashion, they scored what? What, what minute was the goal? 90th minute goal, and it was from our corner they broke and scored. So, yeah, very disappointing. But the glimpses of how this tactic looks and shapes up were starting to come together in the first big game of the season. But he did get his goal, Timo Werner. As you can see, we're going to keep him highlighted over on that left-hand side. He scores within the first minute, so we're building up once again. There's your back three. I said ideally that would be Lima, but, you know, FM does FM things. We build it up well. We're still patient. Vert quick vertical passes. Andre Silva's coming off, popping it off quite nicely. Is that pressing forward? And Cuckoo coming into that little space as he does so well. And then defenders have now got their eyes. Look, look at a Fagerman focus. Focus on the ball. Allows that run. There is Timo Werner off that left-hand side and actually slots in to make it 1-0. 
And then the goal that ended up being a winner, it's a nick of possession. The counter press, obviously, you've got some good counter pressing players still at RB Leipzig. And there is in Cuckoo to, top up, uh, to tap home. Werner on that left hand side, we might not have won it playing that 4 triple 2. I think the 4 triple 2 does allow teams to build up and get out a little bit. There's a little bit more space out wide for that wide player. Um, if you can beat that and if they can beat your initial press with your two strikers, that's when there's a danger. But obviously, Werner just being that out on that a little bit deeper out on that left hand side did help us win the ball back in that scenario. We wouldn't have probably won it back if we were playing that 4 triple 2. And then the Union Berlin game 4 0 win against the Bundesliga surprise package. Obviously, they're playing that 3 5 2 that they do so well, but with a low block. And what this allows then is because we've built up with the three, it's allowed Garvidal, who we want him to dribble more, want him to progress the ball more. His pass completion and his progressive carries compared to the other central defenders in the top five leagues. Little statistics up here from FB Ref. You can see he's very, very good at it. So we wanted to create that. And using him in this low block, against this low block, should I say, does help look at the amount of distance. I would prefer maybe Werner to go inside a little bit and then Ram to go around the outside. But... He still does it tremendously well, keeps the ball, and he did that a lot. Because they're playing with two narrow central strikers, we needed to build up with that three. Lima then helps us that halfback and allows Gavidal in particular to get on the ball and drive forward and then really focusing at our attacks down this left-hand side. And then the and then the opening goal came after two minutes. Willie Orban getting the ball down. Schlubber's like, once again, we said that space in between, like the defenders, the midfielders, Probably there's your, there's this holding midfield at a single pivot. So he's got away. He's got a few yards. The opportunity now to put a pass in. Andre Silva's run is absolutely brilliant. Working that right channel for us a little bit. Or that inside channel, should we say. And then Cuckoo there acted as a second striker to tap it in to make it 1-0. Superb, quick, transitional play. And the second goal was just as good. Gavarro once again focusing down that left-hand side. Good carry. Good late run from Nkuku. Across, look, there's the central midfielders. Got ahead of them. Defenders sucked in towards the ball. Great run. And then he repairs Andre Silva and has let, sets him up for an easy finish. And at this point, we're rampant. We're reverting our work in the inside channel. Ram, lovely cross. Andre Silva, we want Ram. They still do crosses that work into the box. Don't get them confused. They do, obviously... Score from crosses, that's a cross from a corner, but you know what I mean? We still get crosses when the time is right. Those wing-backs will still, in particular, Ram, in that attacking area. We've got Silva as well. Remember, you've got Paulson, tremendous in the air. We'll get you goals for fun, Andrew Silva. Andrew Silva, as you can see, picking up a hat-trick. And then the brace. We had a brace from Tino Werner. Once again, and Kuka getting into this area. This area is so good. It's so good. And a lovely slip pass in from left. Cutting in, that's what Timo Werner does. I thought he was going to miss it at that point, but he did coolly slot home. Building up from the three, Hadara's now coming as the halfback. Good play, and Cuckoo once again finding Timo Werner. That link, Chad striker inside forward, he's working so well. Just on side. And then there's the press, winning the ball back. Lovely quick play, quick transitions, and we score to make it three. Absolutely flying. There you go. That is the RB Leipzig 4-2-3-1, 4 triple 2 whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to use. Said the 4-2-3-1, I think, does work a lot better. But the 4 triple 2 just gives you a little bit of an option to change. And as I said, if you wanted to change things in game, change don't just change personnel, change the rules. Keep the shape, but just change the rules and just see if you can change it up a little bit that way. All right, as I said, I'm going to be using this in my Twitch save, which is going to be starting in a couple of weeks' time. As I said, go check out the Twitch link down in the description. Go give me a follow. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Smash a like on today's video, much to appreciated, and we'll see you next week. Let me know down in the comments what tactical video you would like to see next week on the channel. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you later.